All right, well then let's go ahead and start. Um, I'd like to convene this special meeting of the Board of Directors of San Lorenzo Valley Water District of March 10th, 2022. Holly, would you call the roll, please? President Mayhood. Here. Director Ackman. Here. Director Falls. Here. Director Smalley. You're muted, Mark. Here. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Um, we now have uh, a section of the meeting called oral communications. If there are any communications from the public um, on topics within the purview of the district, but not on the agenda tonight, now is your chance. If you have a, a comment you'd like to make, please uh, raise your hand. And seeing none, uh, hearing none, um, we'll go on to the next item, um, which is the president's report, which I'll just uh, say as way of introduction. At the end of February, Director Henry sent an email resigning effective March 1st, stating her desire to, quote, make room for someone younger with time and energy to do the job, unquote. I've appreciated the uh, extensive coverage um, that our local newspapers have given to Lois and her activities and uh, within the, uh, and in long involvement with water in San Lorenzo Valley. And so that brings us to our first item of new business, which is, uh, board of director of vacancy and what to do about it. Gina, um, would you like to give a thumbnail sketch on um, what the process is? I think most of us are pretty familiar with it given that we've had what now five of these in the last three years. Uh, and, and Rick, did you want to say anything before I dive into the report? Oh, yeah. I would appreciate if you give uh, the staff report. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, all right, so as uh, Chair Mayhood pointed out, the district has been through a number of these uh, processes of filling vacancies that have occurred for one reason or another on the board. And so I think uh, most of you and, and as well as the attendees are, are pretty familiar with the process. Um, typically there's three options for filling a vacant board seat. One is for the board to uh, make an appointment of a new board member to fill the seat for the balance of the unexpired term after advertising in the community for individuals who may want to apply for the seat. Another is to send the seat to election. Um, this has to occur on one of the established election dates per the code, which there's only certain dates that can be used for this purpose. It's not every date that you may see for a primary and so forth. Um, unfortunately here, because of the timing, um, if the district were to call for an election, the election would be uh, November 8th, 2022, which is the same date that the seat will be um, up for election regardless of an appointment. Uh, and then the third option is that the board can choose neither appointment nor an election and then allow the county board of supervisors to make the decision instead how to fill the seat. So those are essentially the three options. But as I mentioned, because of the timing of this particular vacancy, um, if the district doesn't uh, appoint somebody to fill the seat, um, it'll just remain vacant until the election when it's gonna be filled one, one way or the other, regardless of what the board does. Um, and staff's recommendation is that the board fill the seat by appointment until uh, whoever, um, whatever candidate is elected in the November 2022 general election is qualified and um, takes office for the next four year term. And the reason for that recommendation is that um, it, at least from my perspective, it's um, challenge. It can be challenging to have a four-member board with the possibility of split votes, and also the fewer board members you have, the more difficult it can be to get a quorum 
um, which sometimes isn't an issue, but sometimes if there's urgent business could be a, a problem for the district's functioning. Okay. Rick, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? Um, no, um, you know, okay. I concur with the, the report and I would also recommend that we move ahead uh, and appoint for uh, reasons that council outlined. Okay. So um, in the staff recommendation, there is a motion and that motion also includes, um, in addition to filling the seat by appointment, it provides a schedule um, by which we would do this so that the applicant will be, applicants will be interviewed at the first regular board meeting in April, which is scheduled for April 7th um, and in attachment, uh, what was it, I guess, B, um, there's the schedule of uh, when things will, will happen. In other words, it will be posted um, tomorrow and closing date for receipt of applications would be the 31st of March. And then we'd interview the applicants on April 7th with the idea that um, hopefully we could make a decision that evening. Um, if not, we still have time given the state laws about uh, time frames to make it at a subsequent meeting. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and um, just start with you, Jamie. Did you have any comment on this? Well, um, thank you. I, I just first wanted to start by, um, you know, I, I know that uh, Director Henry couldn't be here with us tonight, but I wanted to say for the sake of the record, how valuable her service was and, you know, um, what a warmth and, and really you know, humanity she brought to all of our meetings and her focus um, always on um, trying to make uh, the customer experience the best it could possibly be was really appreciated and valued. So I, I will miss her contributions to the board, um, although I didn't get a chance to know her well personally. So um, I just wanted to say that uh, for the record, but um, I would agree that um, there's just too many important decisions that we have to make to allow the uh, seat to stay vacant, especially, you know, um, God forbid something happens to one of us, there is still COVID out there. And if somebody's not able to make a meeting for some reason, um, that, you know, makes it even more challenging. So I, I would, uh, I would support the motion to move forward with, uh, the appointment process. Okay. And just let me comment that we will have a formal, um, resolution of recognition of Lois at the next regular meeting. Okay. And she'll, you know, she can uh, attend that if she, she'd like. <laughs> Great. Okay. Um, Bob. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up, Gail, because I was going to ask about, about exactly that. I think that it's important that we, as an organization, make sure that um, everybody's service to our community is honored and they receive a lot of thanks for doing so. It's a time-consuming uh, position. Lois has certainly been doing it for a really long time, except for like a two year <laughs> break from 2016 to 2018. So, um, you know, that, that's definitely something that needs to be recognized in the community. Um, you know, there, there was, um, there, there was, I think, over the course of the last few years, a similar situation at the school board, where there were a very large number of um, resignations that happened outside of the election cycle. And I think this is one of the reasons why um, I really would like us to escalate our lobbying. I don't know if it'll do any good or not, particularly in today's day and age, to provide us with more flexibility around conducting elections for this sort of thing. I think when you start having a large number of people appointed to a board, it, it starts looking, for better or worse, and whether it's reality or not, but perceptions being what it is, it starts looking a little clubby. And I think even the school district said when they reached the fourth resignation and were about to appoint a fourth board member, said, enough, we can't uh, do this anymore. And they actually waited 
several months in order to go to an election. As it turns out, only one person applied, so they didn't have to have an election. But still, the concept of actually <laughs> filling these seats with an election is really, really important to make sure that the issues that are facing the board and the community, particularly critical issues around finance and infrastructure, are fully vetted and discussed in public forums so that the people that are voting on their representative can understand the policies and positions that people want to have. So I, I'm really disappointed that we're facing this again. I was I was sad to see the comment that, that Lois made in, in the press banner where I believe it was um, uh, apply for the position and potentially run for the board in November. I, I, I really wish that Lois could have stayed with us all the way through to November, even if she wasn't going to run, because I think that would have been the best way to honor the community, the commitment she made to the community, uh, and for us to honor her service as well. Um, so given where we are, where we don't have that election flexibility, um, I guess my only ask is, 20 days seems a bit short. Um, with Jamie, I think we did 26. And I forget what it was with Mark, but I think it was longer than less than three weeks. I would ideally like to see this run 30 days. I think a month is the bare minimum to allow people to decide whether or not they want to do this. 20 days makes it kind of seem like, well, maybe there's already been things set up. I don't, it, it just is too short. We still have time to be able to um, appoint somebody with both a regular meeting and if necessary, a special meeting before the deadline um, if we were to allow for 30 days, at least I'm assuming my counting was correct. Even if it's 29 days, it's close enough to 30. Um, had we had this meeting on the third, which we could have done, we, that would have given us a lot of opportunity to give people a 30-day window. I think given that we delayed a week to have this meeting, we, we shouldn't uh, shrink the application time uh, down to 20 days. That's just too short. Uh, Mark? Yeah, I'll just add to that. Uh, pleased to hear that we will get a chance to say uh, to Lois our formal goodbyes during a meeting and thank her for her service. Um, I agree with the staff's recommendation to uh, proceed with the appointment process. Um, I also had a concern with the short time frame that we're providing for applicants um, in order to be able to get the word out. Um, I count 20 days uh, from the day the ad runs to when um, applications are due. So I want to echo what Bob said about the time frame on this. I think uh, waiting two weeks in uh, in April, from the 7th to the, what is that, the 21st, is, is appropriate to give applicants and to give the district a bit more time to advertise a second time and to get the word out, not through the, only the formal channels, but the informal also uh, to folks out there. So that's my thoughts. Okay. Um, I'll go out uh, to members of the public for comments. Let's see, is anybody like to speak? Can you, um, ah, there we go. Well, I, I'm, I'm just worried whether, okay, Jim, Jim Mosher, I, I just want to make sure sometimes I'm not sure when I don't see a hand whether nobody wants to speak or whether that function isn't working, but uh, go ahead, Jim. Yeah, <clears throat> Jim Mosher from Felton, and I just want to support the staff recommendation um, and also to say that I appreciate 
Lois's service, and I'm glad that the board is going to recognize her at the next meeting. <clears throat> I don't really have a position on whether 20 days is enough or 30 days. I think that it's the countervailing issue is just to get somebody on board as soon as possible. And, um, <clears throat> and um, so whatever the board decides on that is, I think would be fine. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Jim. Any other comments? Larry Ford. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. I also support the staff recommendations and would echo what Jim Mosier just said. Thank you very much. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Okay. Um, I'll just go ahead and uh, just make a comment. I I think the the timeline that we came up with was was in part driven by um, wanting to get somebody on board sooner rather than later, um, just because as processes go on, the later somebody gets added, um, it just isn't as helpful. And also if we're thinking about uh, assigning somebody to a committee, it's just, well, they're potentially depending on who we choose, might involve some changing around of committee memberships. Um, but I, I don't, you know, have a particularly strong feeling about that. Just to, to comment, you know, to Bob's question of why we didn't do this on the third, um, we we could have, but I actually was concerned that there would be people saying that we, uh, by doing it on the third, the public wouldn't have much chance to uh, know about the meeting and um, that we could be accused of rushing the decision about whether to appoint or leave it open. And I was actually, part of the reason we have the special meeting pop was I was afraid you were going to object to the time frame of the third. So, uh, but... Like I said, I don't have strong feelings about this. Um, you know, if we want to put off the uh, choosing the person till it would be the 21st of April and adjusting the, um, the you know, other deadlines kind of accordingly, um, that would be fine with me. I don't really care. Um, Jamie, you have any thoughts about that? Um, no, I, I agree with you. And, you know, I, I had not occurred to me how tight the time frame was until Bob and Mark so rightly brought it up. But yeah, I, I, I can be persuaded that that makes sense. Okay. So then how about if I just change the the motion that is, Gina, did you? Sure, may, may I suggest April 13th that, it, that the second sentence say applicants will be interviewed at the second regular board meeting in April? Uh, Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Let me let me take a step back here. I think what we would do, and this isn't in the motion, is that I would suggest we change the timeline so that applications are due by 3 p.m. on April 13th, which is the Wednesday before the board packet goes out for the uh, meeting on the 22nd, and it provides 30 days for applicants. First, right? 14 plus 7 is 21. April 21. Yeah, and so then the second sentence of the motion would read, applicants will be interviewed at the second regular board meeting in April, which is scheduled for um, April 21st. Right. Okay. All right, so can, I'll just read the motion as, as revised just now. Um, this is, we are moving to proceed with filling the vacancy um, on the board by appointment, applicants will be interviewed at the uh, second regular board meeting in April, which is scheduled for April 21st. The appointee would serve until the seat is filled in connection with the November 2022 general election. So I'm, I'm moving that. Is there a second? Second. Second. Okay. Um, any further comment among members of the board? And let me just go out. We've got a couple of people that have joined us. So let me just go out and um, make sure that there isn't any more comments from members of the public. Seeing none, hearing none. Holly, would you take a roll call vote, please? President Mayhood. Aye. Director Ackman. Yes. 
Director False? Yes. Director Smalley? Yes. Okay, motion passes uh, unanimously. All right, so this will be posted tomorrow with a change in the deadline to be the Wednesday before um, the meeting on the 21st. Okay. And um, that brings us to the next item of business, which is um, Lois was our vice president. So on um, her resignation, that position is open. So we need to um, vote in a new vice president. And I hope that you will indulge me in um, as president and allow me to nominate Jamie Ackman as vice president. Thank you very much, Gail. Um, I appreciate the the confidence. <laughs> okay. I would accept the nomination. <laughs> I'll second that. Okay. Any discussion? Not among the board. Then how about among the members of the public? Okay. No discussion there. I don't see any. Okay, so Holly, could you go ahead and um, take the roll call vote, please? President Mayhood. Aye. Director Ackman. Yes. Director False. Yes. Director Smalley. Yes. Okay, all right. So, Jamie, you just have to hope that I don't get hit by a beer truck in the near future then. I'm going to need you to stay very, very careful and wrap yourself in bubble wrap. All right. Okay. All right. So finally, we get to uh, our one piece of unfinished business. Um, California Governor's Office of Emergency Services designation of applicant's agent. Rick? Thank you. This, this item is, in, is directly related to our FEMA and Cal uh, OES grant uh, applications from the CZU Flyer requiring uh, the district uh, adopting and approving a designation of applicants agent resolution for non-state agencies, basically housekeeping uh, for us to move ahead with receiving uh, grants uh, from the two agencies, a uh, requirement of, of designation of applicants agent resolution. The district uh, needs to adopt the attached resolution um, basically housekeeping uh, moving forward. And this means that the state and feds are getting closer to start um, uh, reimbursing the district. Um, and so this process is needed for that reimbursement. Uh, you'll see uh, their uh, standard resolution um, and uh, the district's uh, resolution to be adopted. Okay, so basically we just have a motion to adopt the um, attached resolution, um, thereby adopting and approving um, and designating our um, agents um, for these non-state agencies. Any, <laughs> so moved, is there a second? Second. Okay, second, any discussion? I feel sorry for Mark there. There's only three lines for mm -hmm. board members. There's only three lines for board members. I well, we we could add him. I mean, <laughs> well, let's let's add him, please. Okay. I, uh, I do, do, no, 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 do, no, Mark. Do not. <laughs> no, Mark. We're we're please. adding we're adding you. If there was five people, we'd have five. Come on. Do man. not amend. We, we, we wondered we wondered about that this afternoon when we were getting ready for the meeting right. of how how we ended up with those, but uh, we decided yes, I, we didn't. Have, al we didn't alpha have. order, I'm assuming. But yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, board chair first, then we went by alphabetical order. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Sorry, I, Mike. I do have a question though. Mm -hmm. Rick mentioned getting ready to issue reimbursements. Reimbursements for. Well, we have, we've had several of our category work obligated in the category B projects. Um, and once obligation comes, that's mean they've been approved to move ahead and start the reimbursement process. So um, uh, 
they're not the, it, this is work that's already been completed that the district expense funds that's been reviewed and uh, FEMA now will now uh, as obligated to make reimbursement. So we're getting through the process, but we still have a long ways to go because they haven't even started the permanent repairs, which is called category F, which you know, okay. uh, five mile pipe, okay. one of the bigger projects. And they're still getting through one of the bigger claims to category A, our emergency response, which is a little over, I think three million plus dollars. So reimbursements for CZU related damages. Exactly. Yes, okay, thank you. That's good news though. It is. Money, money. Yeah, closer anyway. So any other comments or questions? Okay, so I guess we need to vote on this, Holly? Uh, it's the public. The public. Well, I, I okay, that I, I was looking, at, let me formally ask, um, are there any members of the public that would like to comment on this? Seeing none, hearing none. Holly, would you take the roll call vote, please? Ed Mayhood. Aye. Vice President Ackman. Yes. Director Fulce. Yes. Director Smalley. Yes. Okay. Passes unanimously. Um, with that, we come to the end of the meeting. And if there's no objection, I will go ahead and adjourn us um, and leave you the rest of the evening to do something else fun. Okay. This Thank is fun. Thank you all for attending this special meeting. Good night. Okay. Good, Good night, night, everyone. Thanks.